Hi, my name is Mackenzie here at Sinelki, and in this video, we're going to go through our new international credit check. We're now available in Canada and the US to check over 20 international countries, powered through Nova Credit. The international check also covers 80% of all immigration to Canada, so you can be assured your new Canadian application is covered. These countries include Australia, Austria, Germany, India, Kenya, Mexico, Nigeria, Philippines, South Korea, Spain, Switzerland, United Kingdom, and Ukraine. We also have more countries being added on along the way, including our upcoming countries of China, Colombia, Pakistan, and South Africa. Okay, now we're going to take a look through of what the actual credit report you get and what it looks like. So a couple of key things, because we pull from multiple credit bureaus across different countries, they all have different standards for credit scores. Because the credit scores vary as much as the countries that we're getting the credit scores from, there is no one standard. So with our reporting service for the ease of use in North America for Canada and the US, their credit score is standardized to match the similar range of an Equifax or TransUnion credit score. The international credit score is broken down into six sections. The header, score and risk profile, action codes, aggregated attributes, trade lines, and inquiry history. Okay, well, let's just take a look at a report and here we go. So on the screen here, we've got a sample report. The first section is called the header, which includes these two sections here. And that just gives you a name of the applicant, date that is generated, and the country that it was pulled from. In our case here, we have the source from India. The next part of the section is the foreign credit report. This gives you a credit score. Again, this is converted from the home country's credit score system into a unique number that represents something similar to Equifax and TransUnion used in North America. The next section is the score codes. These list any flags or anomalies you need to be aware of. These could be missed payments, defaults, typically more negative score codes are displayed here. Okay, in the next section, we now have calculated metrics. This is our aggregated attributes. So we've got some kind of some straightforward stuff. How much have they used of their overall revolving credit utilization? So how much of balance do they have on their credit cards and line of credit? The age of the oldest trade lines, this is great. The longer this number is, the longer they've been managing their own credit and finances. Number of inquiries in the last six months, and of course, any open trade lines. Again, trade lines are the credit scores or the different financial products. Credit cards, lines of credit, loans, things of that nature. The next metric we have here are trade lines past due. If you see any hits here, that means that they've gone overdue on a billing cycle. And again, same thing here is trade lines past three cycles or three billion cycles. Another way to put this is they're over 90 days late as a typical billion cycle is one month. Total debt open. This is a balance of all of their outstanding loans. So in this case example, we have $179,860. Total scheduled payment obligation open. This is the minimum payment they have to make every month to service the debt that they have outstanding. In the next section, we're going to talk about trade lines. As we mentioned before, trade lines can be a variety of different products. In this example, we have a student loan. Uh, it's an installment loan. Uh, it's no longer active. As we can tell, the balance is at zero. The original loan amount was just under $17,000, and they had a scheduled payment for $370. Again, since we know that's inactive and it's already been paid out, the payment history then also reflects that, as it's all green and it's been paid up in full. There's been no missed payments throughout having that product. So we'll skip over to the next kind of ones. These are all similar setups for different products. Okay, in the next section, we're looking at notices. In the notice section, this is where we might get miscellaneous messages from the local credit bureau that don't really fit into any of our other categories. In this case, we noticed that the identity was last verified on December 12th, 2018. Going on to the next section are inquiries. Generally speaking, the more inquiries you see could be a sign of someone being credit hungry or in the need of credit or money. If you see a number of credit inquiries over a relatively short period of time, that could be from a decision to buy a product, perhaps going for a car loan, shopping around, or perhaps going for a mortgage. So in this case, we see that they had one inquiry going back in August of 2021. They are seeking for credit. So it looked like the, an increase to the credit limit and it was collateralized, meaning that there was likely an asset to back up the risk of loaning out the loan. That could have very well have been a car or it could have been a piece of real estate in their home country. In the last section, pretty straightforward, we can see their address from the country they came from. Again, this would be a billing address, so this is likely the address they use for any bills that they had in their personal name. 